March the 1st, live on Channel 5. Eurovision comes to Telford, but this time it's in the form of European boxing. There's a Bas Barrow and Sam Egerton battle it out for super welterweight supremacy on the continent, and it's a, ta it's a talent stacked card. We spoke to Dan Toward earlier. We've got Tom Welland here today. Tom, Happy New Year. Is it too late to say Happy New Year? I mean, it's Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day, I guess. Uh, is a <laughs> more you, Chris. Uh, welcome. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Did you uh, catch the Super Bowl the night? I did catch the Super Bowl the other night. First time I watched it actually, and I was quite, in I was quite intrigued. So um, I didn't know what to expect, but I was quite entertained. I'm not gonna lie. I watched it without fully understanding what was happening, but it seemed like everyone yeah, else I did have a clue. Time. So, I didn't have a clue, but everyone was everyone was loving it. So I was, I just got in, got in with the vibes. They were telling me the last ten seconds were the most, uh, you, you know, adrenaline filled and whatever. But yeah, they should. Yeah. Be. Um, I watched it without having a fight to prepare for. Uh, you, on the other hand, you've got one coming up. Uh, how's training going? Yeah, the discount's been unreal. To be fair, we've made a lot of a lot of progress. We've um, obviously started our camp in Vegas um, just before Christmas. Um, uh, in between Christmas and New Year, and we we got some good rounds out there, some good learning experiences, uh, and we came back. We adjusted our training when we came back to the UK, um, and this camp we we've, we've been flying. This camp we've um, we've made some real good improvements. We've got a proper nutritionist on board this camp, and he's got our weight sorted, and we're fighting at a lower weight this time. So um, it's good to be good to be prepared, and we've got some really good rounds. I've been sparring uh, the French uh, number forty three in the world at featherweight. Um, we get some really good rounds in with him and I've been sparring super lightweight so uh, feeling very prepared and feeling ready for March 1st Talk to me a little bit about Las Vegas why, why were you there? Um, so obviously O'Hara was fighting Ismail Barroso mm -hmm. um, and I sort of jumped at the opportunity and I thought you know what I can go out there get some good rounds and get, get to just experience it all really so I went out there um, I sparred Bruce Carrington Shushu Carrington um, he was ESPN and top ranks prospect of the year um, we got some good work with him out there um, and we was we were just there for the experience really and sort of started our camp off and got some real gut chicken sparring out there. Um listen, they're ten and oh, six knockouts and they're already world level fighters and you can see why like Vegas is just the fight capital of the world and you've got everything there. Everything that everything boxing related is in Vegas. So we had to go and experience it once and we started off our camp from there. Is this would you say I mean continuing it's not your introduction to pro boxing you I mean you, you've you've fought twice and one brutal bloody battle and uh, and one knockout so it's not an introduction but it's uh it's a next step if you like it's still early days but like you say that gut check is a good term it's welcome to big school almost it was did you did it feel like a step up uh in the boxing pro game yeah, definitely. I like to see it as the transition from year six to year seven. It's almost like you're okay. you're coming in, you're coming into big boy school now. You got to put your big boy pants on, and you got to take a little bit of independency. So, um, yeah, it was definitely a gut check in spa. I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm two. I've had two fights as a pro now, and this this year for me, 2024 is all about learning. Um, but for the foreseeable future, we want to look at titles. We want to look at being the best in the world, and for that to happen, you've got to mix in with the best in the world right now from the start. Um, so we went out there, we had some good rounds and obviously I keep saying it, but I can't I can't stress how much of a gut chicken spa that was. And I know I know what level I'm at, I know what level I want to be at, and I've seen how they train and what they do to be at that level. So I know what I have to do now. What were you able to bring back to the UK? Uh, not not in terms of in your suitcase, but knowledge wise, what what are you able to do differently that you've picked up over there? Uh, just the grueling sparring. I was sparring four minutes and 30 second rest over there. Um, and we were sparring eight to 10 rounds every time and three or four different opponents. And everyone, you, you've got the, the boys sparring and you've got everyone shouting in the ring over the top of the ropes. And it's just a mad atmosphere over there. And it is, it is a proper, it's a proper learning experience. And I know now that it, it is soft over here. Like I spar, we everyone does three minutes and this camp, we've been trying to implement the four minute rounds and the 30 second rest. And it's just a lot more grueling. So if they can do it, I can do it. Okay, so we've got that to put into play for March the first. What happens? What does that do to Tom Welland? What? Said, let me let me rephrase. What does Tom Welland at two and zero coming into the ring for his third fight? How is the, how is he different from Tom and Tom Welland who was one and zero coming in for his second fight? Uh, Tom Welland coming in for his third fight is a lot more brutal, a lot more smart. Uh, put his combinations together a lot better and. Brutal finishes this time. Obviously, we had a brutal fight in the second fight, but I couldn't get him out of there. He was just too tough. But I feel 
if I had that fight again with the knowledge that I bring back from Vegas, I don't think that fight would last past the fourth round. Do you think? Do you think that last fight should have been stopped? Uh, if you ask me, obviously I've got a bit of a biased opinion, but it's not just come from me. But I do think that should have been stopped. I mean, the cut was horrible. Uh, the cut above his eye. I mean, that happened in the third round, and then he had a big lump on the other side of his head from the fifth. Um, I don't really know how that fight didn't get stopped, but it was valuable rounds to me, and again, part of all the learning process. So the next fight, you're more brutal. I mean, <laughs> you're more brutal. That looked like something off a Hollywood film set last time. So who knows what's going to happen with a more brutal performance? Um, it's a stoppage on the agenda. Do you do you allow yourself to go looking for it? Um. I always say never look for the stoppage. If it comes, it comes. But, yeah, I mean, obviously, we're going out to, to put the division on notice. And this year is a bit of a learning year, so we want as many rounds as possible. But I know I know Nissa and Kayla want to keep me active. Um, so I know we'll get a lot of fights this year. So this year, it, also, it is all about learning. But also, we want the stoppages under our belt. And we want to end this year strong and pick up 2024. I uh, I feel like I'm, I've asked you this question a lot of times uh, in the few months that we've been working together, Tom. But it's probably going to keep coming up, uh, as well it should when you when you have such high ringing endorsements. But Manny Pacquiao, a couple of clips of him recently back on the bags and back on the pads. I don't think we're going to see him back certainly in the pro ranks again. But it kind of feels like the torch is now being passed. And if there is going to be a Philippine face of the sport, um, you are potentially the one to to be that flag bearer now. Yeah, it'd be an honour to to hold the flag for the Philippines, and obviously to to have it passed down from from Manny Pacquiao. That's a that's an honour in itself as well. But he looks ruthless on the bag at forty five years old. He looks incredible. He's in great shape as well. Um, and even when I was in Vegas, I was speaking to his son a lot out there, um, what I, over the phone, over Instagram DMs and that sort of thing. And he was telling me, "Listen, go to this place. If he got us in at top rank, he asked us to go to top rank if you wanted to." Um, and there was loads of different. Loads of different gyms that, with that connection, we could have got ourselves into. So it was nice to it was nice to know that um, I had someone almost setting me up for different experiences. Um, but listen, I don't think we'll see Pacquiao in the ring again, unfortunately. So if if he does want to pass the flag down, I'll be I'll be with open arms. Would that would would Manny be your dream sparring partner? Just to just to get those rounds in and see how it'd go. One hundred percent. If I could, you wouldn't. I went. I went bat an eyelid at saying no to him to spy Manny Pacquiao. I couldn't care if he knocks me out, if he knocks five bells out of me, just to just to come out of that ring and say, yeah, I've done three, four, five rounds of Manny Pacquiao is an absolute blessing. That's more than many pros did who did face him. But uh, yeah, it's, it's great to it's great to hear that he was um, opening doors for you. I mean, li- li- what a connection to have, right? What a what what a way to be introduced to Las Vegas by a Philippine icon, Manny Pacquiao. One hundred percent. And in terms of the way that boxing goes, there's not many better than Manny Pacquiao. I mean, you you think of your Tyson's, your Pacquiao, your Joshua's. Pacquiao's up there with probably the best at, at, at the best at the best end, and um, he knows everyone. I mean, obviously with his connection with Freddie Roach in in LA and just his connection all over America, in the Philippines, in Europe, he's he is well widely known as the face of boxing. So to have that connection, to have almost that support from such a legend and such an icon of the sport, it's, uh, it's very motivating for me. There is a bit of a Philippine uprising in boxing at the moment. And pa- Pacquiao, undoubtedly the face for the last couple of decades, really. But um, but across the scene, there's there's more fighters coming through now. There's so many, obviously, with the misfits as well. It's not, not just professional boxing, because I know the professional boxing is on the rise, especially for the Filipinos at the moment, it's coming out of the Philippines and coming out of America and the UK. But also there's misfits coming through. Obviously, Salt Pappy was training with um, the Philippine Olympic squad where I was training for a little while, um, only over Christmas as well. So I think we're all sort of starting to integrate into the same sport now. There's not so much... You, there's, I don't see it much as influence of boxing anymore. It's all sort of becoming one sport. The misfits, the misfits boxing are starting to integrate into professional boxing and vice versa. And everyone can learn off of everyone, you know. Is that a training partner you'd like to maybe work with one day? Admittedly, it, you know, crossover boxing and, and, and professional boxing, uh, almost two completely separate sports in many ways. However, you know, Salt Pappy, well, well, refer, well, well, well referred to by many quarters, you know, sort of one of the higher end skill level boxers in the crossover scene. But he also knows how to manage that audience, massive audience, big following, etc. Maybe maybe you teach each other a thing or two. Is he a, is he a partner you might want to work with in the future? 
Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, you've got Salt Pappy, Small Spartan J, obviously Tasmanian Devil just signed with Misfits. There's so many Filipinos that are coming through at the moment, especially on the Misfits scene. That we can sort of offer different things to each other. Obviously, Salt Pappy with managing the following, gaining the following, and then moving the boxing side. There is many things that we can learn off of each other, and definitely someone I'd like to work with in the future. Interesting. Well, talk to me about 2024, Tom. I mean, we start on March the 1st, but what happens after that? How fast do you want to move? How f- Are people telling you to slow down? Are you telling them to hurry up? What what what, what do you want to know in 2024? Uh, 2024, I think this should be quite an interesting year. Obviously, I'm only 19, so I'll be 20 in August this year. Um, so I've got bundles of time. I don't need to rush. And I've not, told, I've not told my manager to rush. I've not told my manager I want this fight, I want that fight. This year is all about learning for me. It's all about being active and just getting as many fights in as possible. Um, and then we'll probably start looking at titles in 2025. But this year, get as many as many fights as possible, loads of different styles, um, loads of different nations. And I mean, if we can fight abroad, that would be nice. It's a different experience. But this year is all about learning for me. And we're not, we're not looking, we're not saying to ourselves, right, at the end of the year, we want this fight. Or at the end, at, in August, we want this fight. It's just... We'll take one fight at a time and one learning curve at a time. Well, two and oh so far, two fights down, two both big reasons to tune in, a stoppage and a bloodbath fight. It's what you want from boxing. We can't wait to see what fight number three brings. Tom, it's only a couple of weeks out now. We're going to see you in Telford. Wish you all the best, mate. We'll see you, we'll see you there. Thank you very much.